Hello and welcome back to Community Fest, the podcast that puts the community at the forefront of all discussions. I am Bessie Krenzel, one of your hosts. With me is David William Prempe. Today we delve into the world of succession in Ghana. As part of BMP Associates vision to give back to society, we bring you the special two-part episode on Ghana's laws on intestacy. As you may know, intestacy occurs when a person dies without leaving a valid will, which can create many legal issues for their loved ones. In Ghana, the current law on intestacy is the Interstate Succession Law, passed in 1985, PNDC Law 111. Our goal for today's episode is to provide a comprehensive understanding of the law, the the legislative antecedents of this law, and the key features of the law. Our ultimate objective is to encourage every listener to plan their estates and make a will to ensure that their wishes are carried out after their death. Thank you, Bessie. To, today, to help us unpack this, this complex topic, we have a special guest in our midst in the mm-hmm. person of Mrs. Sheila Yanyantichua Minka Premo Esquire. Mrs. Sheila, we are happy to have you here. Thank you very much. I'm also Mrs. honored to be here. Mrs. Sheila is actually a senior lawyer, development consultant, and human rights activist. She holds a law degree from the University of Ghana, Ligon, and was called to the Ghana Bar in 1989. She also holds an LLM, that's a master's in law, from the Georgetown University Law Center, Washington, D.C., in the USA, where she specialized in human rights law. She is also the managing consultant of ALC Law Consults, that's formerly Apex Law Consults. It's a law firm in Accra that provides legal services in civil law, including, including family law, land law, mining, and the firm has several clients. She has so many achievements, but we can only aspire to mention a number of them. <laughs> so um, I'll start by mentioning the fact that she has worked with a number of NGOs on the development of several laws in Ghana relating to the family, which include um, the Domestic Violence Act, uh, the Interstate Succession Bill, the Property Rights of Spouses Bill. Uh, she's also a co-consultant in drafting the national policy and plan of action to implement the domestic violence act she is also a national consultant for the drafting of the child and family welfare policy in 2015 justice for children policy 2015 with the ministry of gender and children ministry of gender children and social protection with funding from unicef she has a number of affiliations she's a member of the ghana bar association and chairs its Women and Minor Rights Committee. She's also the first president of the Women's Forum of the GBA, which was formalized in 2022. She belongs to a number of human rights organizations, the African Women Lawyers Association. And she's also the convener of the Affirmative Action Gender Equality Bill Coalition. Mm -hmm. And she's also a a member of, uh, she's currently on a number of, of boards. So, Mrs. Sheila, <laughs> thank you once again for honoring our invitation and we hope to have a, a fruitful discussion with you on Ghana's current law on intestacy here on our podcast. So Betty, I, I would like you to take us away away. Okay, so Mrs. Minka Premo, my very first question is when we say the law of succession, what generally do we mean? Thank you very much. <clears throat> So we're talking of what happens to properties people acquire in their lifetime. Mm -hmm. You know, as we go through life, people acquire properties, both movable and immovable. So when we're talking about um, succession to property, it's what happens to it. And usually in in Ghana, as in most Commonwealth countries, you either die testate or intestate. So if you say you died testate, that means that you left a will in accordance with the Wills Act, which indicates how you would like the properties you yourself acquire properties to be shared. If you died in test states, that means that it doesn't leave any will, and therefore the default law that would apply currently is the Intestate Succession um, Law 1985, PNC Law 111. So that's what would apply to you. Okay. And normally when we are talking about succession, we always want to make a distinction between succession to property and then the traditional type succession where when anybody dies, traditionally, they would always ask somebody to succeed you 
before 85, it went together with the type of um, how your, your intestinal property was treated. But since 85, there's been this, you know, the cutoff. You can do it. Whoever is your successor can be appointed, mm -hmm. but it doesn't go with succession to property. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's important to make that extension. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, my next question was actually the difference between dying testate and intestate. I think you've answered <laughs> it very well. Okay. But um, I want you to highlight the need for us to distinguish between dying testate and dying intestate. We want to emphasize the need to distinguish it between those two. Okay, th thank you very much. So it's very important to make a distinction between the two because two different legal regimes apply. Okay, as I indicated, if you died testate, that means that you, you left a will in accordance with the Wills Act. People write things, mm -hmm. etc. But if it's not written based on the guidelines or the rules on the Wills Act, it, it, it may not be found to be a properly done will. The, the Wills Act sets out how you're supposed to do it. The key part of it being um, how it is um, how you sign, and then it's attested to by its two independent witnesses. So once you, 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 you follow that law, then clearly whatever you've written in it for yourself acquired property, that's what um, would apply. On the other hand, if you don't do any will at all, then, um, you know, what, what legal regime applies? Before 1985, different, it depended on the personal law of the person. But since 85, the key law is the intestate succession law, you know, it's an one, which indicates how self-acquired properties are supposed to be distributed. So the key thing to remember is that if it is property you're holding in trust, maybe for the family, family property, it doesn't apply to it. It's only your self-acquired and it's, you're guided as to how it's supposed to apply. The other thing that's also important to remember, because whenever we talk about these laws, it's always important to remember to let people know that the fact that you're dead, whether testes or intestines, doesn't mean the person people just go and distribute based on your will mm -hmm. or based on the intestine succession. The law also requires that if you die testate and you left a will, there's a process. Yes. Um, first of all, when you make a will, a copy is supposed to be put at the, the court. So um, it's usually read out, and then <clears throat> those that you state as executors would have to take steps mm -hmm. to have. Um, the courts will scrutinize it and make sure that everything is okay before they give you a document called the probate that you use to distribute the property in accordance with the law. On the other hand, if the person died intestate, mm. then they have to apply for lessons of administration. Um, and then, um, you know, based on who the person left behind, then the distribution, once they get the, 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 the documents, then the distribution is then also done. Okay. So yeah. it's important. Those, so it's like a different, two different sets of laws yeah. apply depending on how you die. Yeah. So it's very important to know that. Right. Mm. So speaking of um, the PNDC law 111, um, can you throw some light on the key legislative antecedents that led to the need, the, the, the need to pass that, that bill? Okay. what led to the passage of, of that bill. okay so before 1985 there were as i said depending on the personal law yeah. of a person and you know in ghana we have what we call a plural legal system mm -hmm. so different um rules applied so for the for people who were not married under the i mean marriage then marriage ordinance um when they died customary law applied and that depended on whether the person comes from a patrilineal system, lineage system, or a matrilineal lineage system. And it also, if you also married under the ordinance, the under the, the then matrimonial mat, uh, what marriage is, marriage um, marriage ordinance, yeah. there were rules about how properties are also distributed. Then yeah. uh, the Muslims also had their rules. Mm -hmm. So it was realized that each of them there was discrimination, and those who suffered. Where it was, you know, there was some kind of gender based discrimination against women. For customary law, for the patrilineals, it was the um, children who inherited a, a father. Usually, when a mother dies, the complication is not too much. It's usually when a father dies yeah. that there are problems. So, for the patrilineal system, it's the children who inherited, but then in the most patrilineal systems, girls can only inherit movable properties. Mm -hmm for immovable it's only the male children because the perception is that she if she inherited any landed property she would take it to her husband's oh, house yes. which was not countenanced <laughs> yes. then for those in the matrilineal system it's a little more complicated 
for the matrilineal, it's um, inheritance is through the matrilineal lineage, and usually it's either a, a nephew or a niece who inherits it. Yeah. And children, spouse could only stay based on good behavior, etc. And what the then memo indicated was that for when we were we lived in smaller communities, even though the 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 the, the nephew or niece who inherits inherited most parts of the property is holding it sort of in trust for the family and the head of family could you know cross check what they were doing but as urbanization globalization etc people would inherit um you know sell properties mm -hmm. go live outside the checks that people those acquire properties outside the immediate community of the particular family so it was more difficult to monitor so it was realized that particularly children were becoming very vulnerable mm -hmm. and not benefiting at all from their father's property even though they're supposed to be only enjoying when they were of good behavior so these were all found to be discriminatory then for the those married under the marriage ordinance which is um the mon monogamous states of at that time the 1884 law which had been revised in 1951 they um there were little distinctions yes the spouse when it comes to spouses a widower got two-thirds of his wife's property but a widow got it's, sorry, it's the other way around. A widower got a half of his wife's property, but um, the, 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 the widow only got um, one third mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, of the property. Then for the Islamic people too, who had, well, some of them had their marriages with each other, the marriage of Mohammedan's ordinance of 1907, etc. They used what they call the Sharia, Sharia law. law. Yeah. And over there too, there was a distinction between inheritance by male and female children. So male children got more, they got the the, 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 the same female children, whatever. It was realized in 85, you know, I think um, they had started, I think um, that Ghana had signed on to a lot of international human rights instruments, one of key one of which was the Convention on the Invasion of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. Mm. There had also been a series of, they had started, I think by 85, they had done two world conferences on women. Mm. And it was emphasized that there was a need to ensure the removal of discrimination, etc. Fortunately, unfortunately for us, we're under a military regime. Mm -hmm. So they passed by decree and this a succession law, a very strong law, which changed things and tried to address this kind of the, the discrimination, discrimination that's existed. Yeah. yeah. So what are some key features of the PNDC law 111 that are worth highlighting? Okay. So for me, the key feature is that the, the nuclear family, mm -hmm. the, the, the middle the spouse, and the gender neutral doesn't target women. It's gender neutral. So the spouse and children were given special protection. Mm -hmm. So majority of the, at least when it comes to chattels, all the chattels would go to surviving spouse okay. and children. children. And, yeah. and, and household chattels is defined widely to include, I always tell, when, when I'm doing education on the law, we say, if a car, if you see two cars in the in the house, you look at the plates. Is it white or is it yellow? The white car, the white plates are household chattel. Mm -hmm. The yellow is commercial, so it falls outside. Mm -hmm. So household chattels um, all went to surviving spouse and children. Then one house goes to 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 them as well. And then after you've taken the household chattels and then one house out, then the remainder is divided depending on who the person left behind so it's it, it's 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 if, if for instance in one of the scenarios if the person left behind um a spouse maybe a wife and um, children um parents and then everybody comes in ghana we all come from a certain type of lineage system so then out of the re so the residue which is the house Take one house taken out, household chattels taken out. The residue is divided in such, such a way that um, children, the, 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 the children will get nine over sixteen. Mm -hmm. The surviving spouse will get three over sixteen. And now the remaining four to be divided into two. And then, if they are parents, they would get two of, out of the, that two over sixteen. Then, then two, then the, uh, what um, two over sixteen will be shared in accordance with customary law. So if you come from a patrilineal system, that's what you shared. If it's matrilineal, if the scenario changes and the person is survived by um, children only, out of the residue, the three the children get the children only, and there's no spouse. The children get three over um, divided into the property divided into four. The residue children get three over 
four and then the remaining four is shared to parents and surviving and um, surviving parents if they are there or to the family if if the scenario also changes and there are no children but as a spouse um then um if the spouse will get half of the residue and then the rest will be shared between the, the, the family so the law provided made provision for for that i mean so whilst they got the one house and the um household chattel they also got the bigger chunk mm -hmm. of the residue of the property in there so at least they were, they were well protected yeah. okay because i mean it was apart from the international human rights obligations of ghana i also realized that things were also changing mm -hmm. um people were becoming you know nuclear families were investing more and more in each other than the family would so it was in line with modern realities and i think that in africa that was one of the most um one of the initial um just a succession laws which everybody looks up to really yeah, yeah. yeah. brought some equity okay. okay so i recall when you were distinguishing between the um, dying testate and dying testate you mentioned letters of administration so i would like you to explain more about that how can a person whose relative dies intestate claim their share of their estate with under the pndc law 111 okay so as i stated earlier once um the person dies you make sure you know and it's clear that there was no will mm -hmm. then intestacy comes in what then happens is the rules indicates you have to go to court to get what they call it administration and under the the high court rules um it indicates who have rights of priority so surviving spouse has priority surviving children and then the the the, 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 the family also have a right so any of i mean usually you know the spouse and maybe if the children are have reached one of them have reached like 18 years etc mm -hmm. and then you know usually it's also good to discuss this with the family because there are some courts who would insist on the family being represented then so let's say you know the law says maximum four so between one and um, four, if it is a if it is a, re a relatively good estate, so they apply to to the, there are some documentation that they fill from the courts, mm -hmm. and then they go before the court. The document requires you to, them to state the person's properties. They are listed as part of the provisions, etc. So when they go before the courts, then the courts will look at um, it's you know the proposals that are being made who are the administrators etc and if the court is okay they would grant it, it to them mm -hmm. sometimes it can be just one person if it's a small estate yeah. mm -hmm. you know because even the, under the law um the provision is that if the estate is very small and it's a small estate is defined to include it says what 30 ten thousand it's a very small they should have updated the law yeah. as at now yeah it's about ten thousand mm -hmm. and that's it then it goes to just surviving spouse and children so i mean sometimes just one person can go if it's not a big estate yeah. to get the letters of administration when the letters of administration when they go to court and the court is satisfied they would grant make, make an initial grant and indicate that it should be pasted on at the last place of abode okay. of the deceased and it's usually post, post the maximum 21 days sometimes depending on the circumstances you can plead with the court to lessen the number of days uh -huh. and then um if nobody puts in a caveat then when the time is up they just go to see the registrar to collect it so if other people have an interest maybe mm -hmm. they think that whoever is claiming to be the spouse not the real spouse or mm -hmm. somebody etc um they can put in an application they call it a caveat yes. Yes. that yeah. hey court don't do anything with regard to those estates until you notify me yeah. yeah. so once a caveat is put out what would usually happen is that um you you would be the one who put in okay. Um, who's, who's doing application would have to go on notice for the caveats either to be removed and for the court to grant the application to them so the court will then have the opportunity to go into the matter to find out why yeah, they've put in the caveats yeah. yes in there usually what i've seen in the courts in my what 33 34 years of practice is they'll come up with all kinds of excuses and if the person is included um family, family property. property that's the usual story they would come up with um so it up, it's up to the court in examining to see whether or not the basis or the grounds is valid if it is valid then they can they would say that they will not grant the final thing they have to come back again if it's not valid they'll remove the caveats and then give the 
that's why administration yeah, to yeah. them. Then based on it, then they distribute yes. the person's self-acquired. And what you should also remember that in the application, some of the key information that you have to provide is, you know, what the person's place of abode and 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 the death certificates. Yeah. Yeah. It also has to be provided to the courts in there. Now they are bringing in, you know, because of identity issues, some courts would like to see um, what Ghana, you know, little <laughs> new things are coming in so they can verify who a person is yes and then for the probate it's um it's kind of a bit similar a bit different in every well every good well and um, the person would indicate who the executor is or those who step into their shoes to share their properties um when the person dies so they have the priority to apply for the um, probate which is to apply to the court for the court to look at the will see whether it's everything is okay and to grant them that document to share yeah. sometimes they are not interested mm -hmm. And if they're not inter if you've been appointed an executor and you're not interested at all, you can apply to um to 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 you can apply to what, what there's a word that they be used for it. You can apply to re to, re renounce, to renounce probates renounce that probates, you don't want yeah. to be at this thing. Exactly. It's a document. Yes, yeah, some, some people to just for some just don't do anything after a while, whatever. Yeah. So if they're either the executors named executors either renounce or are not interested in the lens, whatever, then any other beneficiaries can apply to the court for letters of administration with the will annexed Next, yeah. to enable them to administer the property. So they go through the process similar to the letters of administration, but this one, there's a, some of the form, one of the forms indicates with, 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 with the will annexed. Yeah. So then the court will get a chance to look at the will. You know, the, the, the court would like to look at the will to make sure there are also rules. There, nobody has crossed something out mm -hmm. and done things, etc., to make sure that everything is in order, and then it's also granted. Sometimes, too, um, we have, we have, we have instances where um, even the beneficiaries are not. I, I had a long, long ago, I had a case where the other the man had he, the man himself, I think, was a fisherman, but very wealthy, about five, six houses, mm -hmm. and the wives were not very well educated, mm -hmm. etc., you know, so who to go and stand, mm -hmm. etc. Yeah. So, eventually. Um, they went to this, what they call the administrator general, mm -hmm. which is a registrar general. Mm -hmm. One of its hats is to be the administrator general. So you can also apply to them to help the estate to, um, to be administered. So that's also another option mm -hmm. left to people. And sometimes they may even be educated, but very rich and fighting. Mm -hmm. So sometimes the, the, the best thing is to get that neutral body to do the administration for the estate. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what, what, in your opinion, would you consider to be some of the strengths and some of the weaknesses of PNDC Law 111. Okay, for strength, it's made sure that a substantial part of a disease property goes to surviving spouse and children. Yeah. Because, I mean, under our children's act, if you bring children into the world, you're responsible for them. So the law ensured that a substantial part of your property was retained to be used to take up, to look after your children. Then it also made provision for surviving spouses. You know, spouses suffer together to 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 make a joint income to look after um their their, their children okay. etc for i mean like i said under the existing provisions before um apart from the marriage ordinance mm -hmm. none of them really made provision for the surviving spouse okay and so it was very important that they're also taking care yeah. because if one dies is that spouse who needs something substantial to be able to take care of their children etc yeah. etc et so that that was also really really good and and the good thing is that yes whilst ensuring that majority of the property goes to so having spouse and children that little provision was also made for the family as well yes some argue that it was inadequate but something also um goes to them as well and um so for me it was a very important law it was very it was a landmark thing and it stopped you know, impoverishing, um, you know, the spouses and children once the husband or father, but to have it went. And it, because it has a gen gender dimensions, if a, a man's wife died, the family would, it's not likely to come in, to come in. harass him, yeah. like mm -hmm. if it's the other way around, because of this assumption that everything in the home is purchased by the, the husband. Mm -hmm. Yes, but there are some homes where the women are rather the stronger ones. Yeah. You know, when I was growing up, and I think still believe, so some of the, um, um, some of the, the bakers, the seamstresses, etc. Mm -hmm. Very wealthy. We're looking after their husbands. But this assumption was there. And then all these things would happen. So for me, it was a very good law. In terms of weaknesses, 
But no, um, some of the a lot of weaknesses were also found with it. One was first of all, you know, there's this fractional division. I mean, it's sometimes it's impossible when uh, you've gotten estates, all the documents for people to go and I mean, they come and ask you. So, um, nine over sixteen, three over sixteen. <laughs> how do you do it? Uh huh. So yeah. the fractional division becomes difficult, yeah. and what's in some work that we did, we said it then it leads to what we call fragmentation of the property, mm -hmm. because you know typically in Ghana we have what we call polygyny. The men can have multiple um, spouses, etc. So let's say if he happens to be living with one, and then he has three, four, five outside. Soon as the person dies, of course, those outside who even provision may have been made for will jump into yeah. where the man is yes. and things that they will, you know, the media from the, the mediate little household were used to, it just causes problems. So sometimes the best way to for everybody to have peace is just to sell the property. Yes. And then they will end up with losing their shelter, et cetera, et cetera. And then, I mean, in terms of the inequity, there's, there's another element of inequity, which anytime you raise it, people have a good laugh. Because we have a polygynous system, you know, polygamy, it could be polygyny mm -hmm. or polyandry, which is the women taking more, which doesn't happen in Ghana. We have polygyny. So if a man has four wives and each of them dies, he stands to inherit a full portion of each person's own. Mm -hmm. But if that man dies, the property has to be divided in minutes this thing to these four yeah. women so the the, the 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 provisions were passed flat not taking some of these nuances yeah. into into consideration so that's also one of the challenges then the other critique is also that um it's as if a woman a spouse, female spousal share gets lumped up with children yeah. okay meanwhile she may have been on her own working very um much with her that's so 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 and especially it's even worse when the woman doesn't have children with the man but the children as soon as he dies some even appear we have um funeral babies <laughs> they appear at the time of death of birth uh -huh. so there's some element of um unfairness in there then i'm sure you're also aware that under we have a very innovative provision important provision in the um, in our constitution, 1992 constitution, Article 22, yeah. which indicates that um, it's in it's in two parts. That um, the first part deals with intestacy. That um, there has to be um, equity when it comes to intestate property. That one we have intestate session law. There we have mm -hmm. the Wills Act, which also makes a few provisions for um, spouses, etc. Then the second the second part of it is about property rights in the course of a, you know whilst they are alive. Yeah. Yeah. So it indicates that, I mean, properties which are jointly acquired mm -hmm. in the course of a marriage are to be equitably distributed. You know, these matters have um, um, got... But the thing is that in terms of succession law, which was passed earlier, 1985, when we didn't have this provision in the constitution, didn't make that provision. Mm -hmm. So there's an element of unfairness. It's like if uh, somebody wrote an article said, if you, if you die, I benefit more. I mean, it's, 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 it's no, rather it's in, in that cause, it's better to then get divorced and get your share than wait to die. Uh huh. So there's a need to ensure, I mean, the provisions which um, spouses are supposed to enjoy in Article 22 is absent. And so one of the criticisms was that there's a need to try to address that. And then, of course, the, the minimum property that, um, all goes to surviving spouse and children if it's a small estate. You know, somehow the, the figures stayed flat, wasn't being updated. You know, 10,000 Ghana City now is, is nothing to write home about. Uh -huh. So people thought that if the provision, that provision was such that even um, an ally could be used to update it from time to time, there could be some formula so that, you know, as the economy becomes higher. Because otherwise, so many estates, for me, an estate under what, 50,000? It's really 50, even 100. I mean, I don't know how should I mean, 100,000 is even not much. Yeah. They should really move it up. Uh -huh. So it's it stayed the way the provisions, you know, amending things takes quite a while yeah. in there. Uh -huh. So some of these are, so it's a good law, but it has its weaknesses, yeah, especially yeah. the inequity they try to address from the beginning is still red, it's, 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 it's head up in there. Okay. So, um, notwithstanding the existence of PNDC Law 111, um, what advice would you give individuals who want to ensure that their estate is distributed according to their wishes? 
my advice to everyone is to make a well. You know, when it comes to the world, you work hard, sleepless nights. Here I am jumping from one meeting to the other, <laughs> etc. So whatever you acquire, it's just in order that you determine who you think it should go to. Okay, so for me, making a will gives you better control, even as you are going into the other world, than leaving it to um, the, the intensive succession law, which sometimes people can contest, mm -hmm. and they're in court for a long time. Will, make it simple, make it clear, and then you make sure that you make particular provision. I know that the Wills Act has special provisions for people to make adequate, if you don't make adequate provision for um, a dependent spouse or for dependent children, mm -hmm. they can go to court to have it varied, etc. But, you know, whilst you're alive, make your will and then it's a better option. It's a better way of dying mm -hmm. than leaving it to chance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And leaving it to your family to have over by Give it to your family to, even sometimes who to apply for the LA. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's a, a problem. problem. Who to, uh huh. It's, it's, it's a big problem. So I think that it's a, a better way of making sure that you make provision for yourself. Yeah. Okay. So, Mrs. Pinker Premo, thank you very much. We've had such an insightful conversation today with you on Ghana's current law and in testers here. We hope this discussion has shed light on the importance of inheritance laws and the need for more advocacy in this area and the need for everyone to leave a will yes. to determine how their property is distributed. Yes, a valid will mm -hmm. to determine how their property is distributed in the event of their death. And um, we hope to have you back in our next episode to discuss uh, the second part of this topic where we'll be looking at um, the interstate succession bill yeah. of 2018 so to so you our wonderful listeners thank you for tuning in and we hope you've gained valuable information to help you make informed decisions as to how to protect your legal rights this has been community first where, where we, we have, have legal and social conversations, conversations with, with the, the community, community.